Ahoy there, Captain Benzie here, coming at you with another video for Infinite Lagrange. This video has been sponsored by Netties, and if you have concerns as to what that means in regards to the impartiality of my content, then I have put out a public statement on my Discord. You can check the link in the description down below to head through to that and see what this sponsorship actually means. Now, in today's video, we're going to be doing another blueprint breakdown, which is my little mini-series looking at all of the different blueprints in Infinite Lagrange, examining the different ship types, including all of their variations, and talking about how you can use them in your fleets to get a better effect. Ultimately, I don't believe there is such a thing as a useless ship in Infinite Lagrange. I think some of them are just very niche, and I want to sit down and talk to you about how you can use each of these ships. Obviously, your ability to build a fleet in Infinite Lagrange depends on what blueprint you manage to find and obviously the different variations that you can unlock. Therefore, having full knowledge on all of the ships in your arsenal is going to help you build better fleets. That's my theory at least. Anyway, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the Jaeger, an Antonius Consortium cruiser. I have technically covered this in a video previously, but I wanted to go a bit more in depth and talk about both variations now that I have them unlocked. Also, because I talked about the Cellular Defender Corvette last week and I mentioned how the Jaeger is my personal favourite ship to launch those from, this felt like a natural progression to now talk about the ship itself. Be aware that the Jaeger Blueprint is only available on Phase 2 servers at the time of me writing this video, so if you are on your very first server in Infinite Lagrange, then this is one you're going to be looking forward to when you move on to your second server. Ultimately, they might change that in the future, but for now, these are only found on Phase 2. Now the Jaeger itself. First of all, the name Jaeger I believe is German, and it means Hunter, which fits quite nicely with the theme of various different Antonius Consortium ships having a bit of sort of a militaristic, violent feel to them, whether that's like the Winged Hussar, which brings back ideas of sort of Prussian cavalry, through to things like the Predator and the Jaeger. It's just how they roll. We have two variants, the Auxiliary Type and the Anti-Ship Type. So let's talk about the Auxiliary Type first off, referred to as the Jaeger Heavy Aircraft Cruiser. Now the reason that I absolutely adore this ship is simply, in the special effects to the bottom left there, can carry four Corvettes. Four Corvettes on one cruiser. That's insane. If you look at your other Corvette cruiser, the Casso 66 aircraft type, it's still 18 command points, but it can only carry two Corvettes, which makes the Jaeger literally doubly as effective for the same amount of command points. You could also make the argument that it does mean you're putting all of your eggs into one basket, and if you were to lose one Jaeger, you're going to lose four Corvettes, whereas losing one Casso is only going to cause you to lose two Corvettes. That said, the sort of the efficiency of command point usage to actually getting those aircraft out there, getting those uh, corvettes into the field, to me makes it more than worth it. And it is an absolute beast, as we discussed with the Cellular Defender. Anyway, of course, that is not all there is to this. If we move across, we've got firepower that is, you know, sort of destroyer tier firepower against anti-ship uh, anti type there, 5,026, 1,653 air defense, which isn't much at all, and a rather pitiful 273 damage from the siege fire. Of course, if you're using a cell, uh, if you're using the Jaeger, it is not the actual cruiser itself that you're worried about. It's the various corvettes that you're launching. They are going to be the thing that is actually pushing forward with your damage. So don't worry too much about what the ship itself is capable of, worry more about what the corvettes that it's launching are capable of doing. If we have a look at its combat roles as well, you'll notice that not only is it an aircraft ship, as we've seen, um, obviously with the capability to launch corvettes, it is a black row ship, which means it's going to be a little bit more survivable than something in the middle or the front row. I do recommend, though, having some form of cruiser tank. Um, something like a Casso 66 standard type in the front row is a great way to go forward there, or even something like a, uh, a Chimera, obviously brilliant option there for tanking. You just want to make sure that these survive as long as possible. Anyway, as we move through, if we have a look at the Corvette loading system, you can see here I've heavily enhanced mine. We've got a load of really cool options, the first of which is a strategy, the ability to prioritize targets. This basically, as it says here, when the enemy fleet attack includes carriers, it deploys the aircraft to attack these targets as a priority and reduces attack duration by 35%. Now, this means that if they're going up against carriers, for me, the Cellular Defender is a great ship going up against other big 
big ships, it's great against larger targets. This is an automatic include from about the point when you start seeing carriers on the field. Obviously don't worry too much about it before then, but once you've seen carriers on the battlefield, get that trained as soon as possible, and your corvettes, whatever you're running, whether it's cellular defenders or TV, uh, TC, uh, the CB T800, sorry, I'll get there in the end. Of course, though, if you are going for that prioritized strategy, note that it does reduce your attack duration by 35%, which means the Corvettes spend less time in the field, meaning you want to get that rearmament acceleration and aircraft maintenance acceleration back up and running as quickly as possible. Those increase your, sorry, reduce your RTB cooldown, which means you get the Corvettes back into the field faster. If they're going to be coming back to your ship and docking up more frequently, you want them to get back into the field faster, as fast as possible. I then obviously always go for the increase the damage of aircraft in the hangar by 10%, which is the airborne weapon maintenance, just because this takes an already ridiculous um, Corvette and just makes it even more powerful. And then I go for the battlefield radar enhancement so that we can lock on that little bit faster. Again, if you're coming back to the uh, the Jaeger, back to the cruiser um, to dock up and then go into the battlefield, you want to be able to lock on as quickly as possible so they actually get to their target and engage. Beyond this, you can go for the hit rate of the aircraft. I find the Cellular Defender personally doesn't really need this, but if you're up using other Corvettes that perhaps have a lower hit chance, you might decide that that's something you want to use there. Um, and I've got an aircraft lock-on warning as a final option there of increasing the missile evasion of aircraft in the hangar by 6%. So if you find that, for example, your Corvettes are getting blapped by um, intercepting, in, uh, intercepting missiles, then yeah, this can be an interesting one to train. But for me, I just go for that RTB, I go for the prioritize on carriers, I go for additional damage, anything that's gonna do more damage and get those Corvettes back into the field. Otherwise, our only weapon on this is an integrated battery system, which is cannon-based. I can't personally be bothered to upgrade these. They do have some interesting abilities. Um, there is, if I find it here, yeah, in, like fighters and corvettes going up against those can be interesting to train into just to make sure that if you are getting fighters coming into your back row that you are at least capable of hitting them and dealing some damage back. But honestly, to me, I would rather make sure those enhancement points are first and foremost put into the corvette loading system. In our armor system, again, things are pretty standard here. We've got standard increased ship HP, increased physical resistance, increased energy resistance, which is always a nice one to have as an option, and reduced critical damage received by the system by 6%. Just means that, again, this is if you're going to train anything in armor, go for that one first of all, especially if you're going up against fleets using things like torpedoes um, or ships that can attack weapon systems and things like that just because that will reduce the amount of critical damage that they can take. But that is basically it for the auxiliary type, the heavy aircraft cruiser here of the Jaeger. This is an insanely powerful ship. The fact that you're getting the same, uh, getting double the amount of aircraft onto the field for the same amount of command points as the Casso 66 just sells this to me as one of the most powerful ships out there. And if you remember looking at the video of the Cellular Defender, the damage numbers that you saw there of 307.3k and 348.9k off those cellular defenders were cellular defenders being launched by this Jaeger. I have done some testing and I've launched my cellular defenders from things like a CV3000 uh, aircraft carrier and the damage isn't quite the same. There is definitely some advantage to using the Jaeger here in order to get those Corvettes into your opponent's back row, blow things up as quickly as possible and maintain air superiority. The final point to mention before we move on is that I do tend to use this in what I refer to as an air superiority fleet. That means that this particular ship is using its uh, anti-carrier strategy in order to get my corvettes to destroy their carriers as quickly as possible. I then have things like tundras um, launching things like spores or sand drakes in order to keep aircraft out of the sky. It's basically a small little pocket um, that is just designed to remove aircraft from the sky and leave the cellular defenders to do their their job of obliterating everything in their path. The variant is then the anti-ship type, the Jaeger Heavy Cannon Cruiser, and this swaps out the Corvette dock for a bow-mounted weapon system. Now, this can be a very powerful cruiser, but unfortunately it's having a little bit of an identity crisis, which does severely impact its capabilities if you don't very specifically build it for a specific task, and that can mean it's quite intensive having to constantly change and reapply the enhancement points based on what you want to use it for. 
Anyway, let's get under the hood and see how this one actually works. So first and foremost, that bow-mounted weapon system, as you can see, has pushed our anti-ship firepower right the heck up. We've got a basic there of 10,551, which can be enhanced by a further 4,776, giving us a fairly monstrous 15,327. Now, of course, our anti-air defense here isn't great at all. 1653, um, not much at all there. There are frigates that do better than that. And siege fire, whilst not great, isn't exactly terrible either. If you are using the heavy cannon cruiser in city-taking fleets, um, then know that at least it is going to actually apply a decent amount of damage to the structures themselves as well. 1147 basic with a 624 enhancement, giving us 1771. Anyway, so let's actually have a look at that bow-mounted weapon system, the CG2210 Carillion K Dual Cannon Heavy Bow Battery. This is a bit of a beast. If we have a look at it, you can see it is a projectile weapon, which means it's used against armor. It fires two attacks per round with an attack interval of 9.86 seconds. Um, ultimately, that's pretty fast. It's a good firing speed. Um, it does a decent amount of damage per hit, which means it will punch through armor, which is good because obviously it's clearly designed to go up against larger ships right well unfortunately the attack priority here just doesn't support that and ultimately its anti-ship firepower prioritizes destroyers and then frigates before going for carriers battle cruisers and cruisers and you might be thinking well hang on Bensi, what's the problem with that well, the problem is, let's have a look at the enhancements. Now, the way I've got this set up is using two of its very unique abilities. First off, it has heavy ammo as a strategy, which means that when the target is a cruiser, it increases damage by 60%, and the attack duration is increased by 30%, which means it keeps firing for longer, and those shots do 60% additional damage. That's on top of the already fairly hefty 11,461. You can do the math on how much these shots actually hit for against cruisers. And definitely we then have the large target correction enhancement, which increases the weapon system hit rate against cruisers and higher class ships by 15%. The trouble is, the second that your opponent's fleet has anything like a destroyer or a frigate in it, the Jaeger gets distracted and spends its time firing at those instead, which means you either then have to go for things like the aiming mechanism enhancement here, um, which you can get a full 15% hit rate against frigates and destroyers, but then you're not using the heavy ammo, you're just kind of using this to rush through those ships to get to the target that you actually want to be firing at. And to me, that's kind of the problem here that by the time you've put in these two enhancements, you don't really want to be going up against frigates and destroyers. You're building this ship around cruisers and larger targets, but the fact that cruisers are literally its fifth priority means it takes ages to get there, and it's going to be shooting at literally everything else before it gets to the cruisers. Beyond this, though, you can go for things like the barrel enhancement increases the cannon damage by 10%. You've got weapon system cooldown decreasing by 15%. Um, between these two, I tend to go for the barrel enhancement and the ammo enhancement, that straight up damage first, because it is a projectile weapon, which means it has its damage reduced by armor. But ultimately, therefore, you want more damage per shot so that a bigger amount actually gets through. If you're going to sit there and constantly just fire faster and it's still not much damage getting through, I don't see the point. So I go for the heavy damage first of all. The final enhancement is increasing system HP. Again, these are never particularly exciting to me unless you know you're going up against a, uh, a fleet that has some really nasty sort of... Uh, some of those aircraft that are going to destroy weapon systems it just ultimately it, it kind of i find it disappointing that if you're using this particular ship you really want to be going up against nothing but cruisers um maybe a couple of battle cruisers or carriers as well but the fact again that everything is prioritized over the cruisers that this was so clearly designed to fight does pose a problem it means that you need to build your fleet around this and you need to have a lot of firepower designed to get rid of those destroyers and frigates first and foremost, otherwise your Jaegers are just going to, as I said, be distracted and shooting at like the wrong targets in inverted commas. Ultimately, if you are going into PvP and you know your opponent is running cruiser heavy fleets, then the Jaeger Heavy Cannon is an absolutely monstrous ship for that role. Just the second that there's a destroyer or a frigate, it really starts to come undone, and that can cause it big, big problems. Now, it does have some pretty cool advantages, notably that it is a back row ship. 
This compared to the, the most obvious comparison here being the Casso 66 artillery type, um, the artillery type is a medium row ship which means it is going to take damage fairly early on in a battle, whereas the Jaeger heavy cannon being back row means it is a little bit more survivable for that. So there is that kind of pro and con going there. But up against bigger ships in the late game, as long as you've got something like some Chimeras or something in the front row to tank, I tend to go for the Casso 66 artillery as a preference. So if you have the Casso 66 artillery and the Jaeger, you may find that the Casso 66 is better against the big targets. If you're going up against the purely cruisers, the Jaeger heavy cannon cruiser is going to pull ahead there. If you're going for smaller, well, neither is really a good option for you build something else at that point. Um, and that's really, as I said, that's the problem here for me. The Jaeger would be an absolutely insanely good ship if only that target priority was changed. And who knows, maybe by the time you're watching this video, NetEase has tweaked that and changed that priority so that cruisers can be put higher up. Heck, even if it was just part of the heavy ammo strategy that it pushed up the chance of it being a cruiser, or if there was another unlock, I would happily swap a barrel heatsink enhancement for another enhancement branch that pushes cruisers further up on the, uh, on the target priority. I don't know, maybe that's just me. Um, but as I said, I think it can be a really good ship, it's just a very niche ship, and you are probably going to have better by the time you unlock this particular variant. So do bear that in mind um, when trying to decide if the anti-ship type heavy cannon cruiser should be included in your fleet. Otherwise though, that's everything today then that I wanted to talk about in regards to the Jaeger. The auxiliary type is one of my favourite cruisers in the entire game and facilitates some extraordinary damage output as you've seen with the cellular defenders. The anti-ship type is an excellent ship, or rather would be an excellent ship if it weren't too busy having an identity crisis and getting distracted by the wrong targets. Um, ultimately, whether or not you use these in your fleet is going to come down to personal preference and what else you have available. If you're looking for something that is going to launch corvettes, I really don't think you're going to get better than the auxiliary type. If you're looking for something to take out enemy cruisers, the anti-ship type is very, very good. But ultimately, I tend to find that if you have the Casso 66 artillery, that's probably going to do a more well-rounded and better job than the heavy cannon cruiser. And that's kind of disappointing, but hey, there we go. Anyway, folks, let me know your thoughts and opinions on the Jaeger Cruisers. Um, I really like them. I hope you do too. Let me know how you run them, what kind of fleet composition you have them in. Otherwise, happy sailing and see you in Infinite Lagrange.